I decided to give my guest toilet a bit of a spruce up. As you can see, it's not that bad, but it's pretty plain. I'm going to replace the cupboard and picture frame and give these walls a nice deep colour. I'm also going to make that awful yellowy door frame white again. So first up, I had to clear the room so that I had a completely blank canvas. And then I had to clean the door frame all ready for painting. I used my trusty footstool to get to the higher areas. Next, I masked up around the frame where the tiles are to keep it all nice and neat. There's no need to mask around the areas at the top as those walls are going to be painted. I used a brilliant white satin wood for door frames and skirting as it gives a lovely low sheen finish. I always make sure to stir the paint even when it's water based like this one. When painting the woodwork, I always get the paint on and then glide over it with the brush to avoid patches and obvious brush marks. It kind of blends in that way. I gave this door frame two coats just to make sure that the old yellowing gloss didn't show through. I think the builders used oil based before. Don't forget to remove the masking tape before it dries so that you don't pull off any of the paint. Then I masked up around the mirror ready for the wall paint. For this room I used silk emulsion as it's more wipeable than matte and gives a great coverage and finish. Let me know in the comments if you want to know more details about the paint I used. I always use a small brush to get into those difficult areas so it's nice and neat around the edges. Next step was masking up the ceiling and along the tops of the tiled area. If using a light colour I wouldn't worry too much about masking the ceiling but as this colour is so dark wonky lines will be so much more obvious. I made sure to cover over the towel rail and the toilet as rollering paint causes tiny splashes which is really annoying. Time to apply the paint. 
I always do the cutting in with a fine artist brush in the tricky areas and then use a small emulsion brush for the areas that need less concentration. Even for the areas that have masking tape, it's a good idea to cut in with a brush to avoid big blobby accidents. When using a roller, avoid going over wet paint too much or it can lift it back up. Once the second coat was on, I took the masking tape off before it dried to avoid paint peel around the edges. Silk or any bathroom or kitchen paint will work in the same way as the wood paint and come away from the edges if you wait too long for it to dry before peeling off the tape. I really love this colour, it's so rich. As you can see it's a bit patchy now but once it's fully dried you can see if any little bits need touching up. Some areas around the top and bottom edges needed a touch up for which I always use my artist brush. I love how the white door frame pops against the deep colour on the walls. Be sure to clean your brushes and roller really thoroughly. The next day it was time to go over any patchy areas. This time I used a small roller with a long handle just to go over it as I knew it was mostly covered. I always feel that because I see imperfections, others will see them too. So I always try my best to check over everything and use my little brushes to neaten up the edges. Once I was happy that I had covered over any patches, it was time to clean up. I could see some tiny splash marks on the floor, so used a cloth and some household cleaner to get those up. Luckily, my floor is tiled. Once the room was cleaned, it was time to accessorise. I got an adhesive toilet roll holder online. I used the tiles as a guide on where to place it and I made sure to sit in place so that I knew it was within reach. Can't have our guests twitching and stretching, can we? This didn't hold for long though, so I ended up refitting it using Loctite glue, which worked perfectly. Next was the framed map. We love maps in this household, so we wanted to keep it. I swapped out the old plastic black frame for a nice chunky white wooden frame. It was hard to get the hooks onto the back, but I managed. I used the type that you twist in and then tied picture wire between them. I had to hang the frame a little lower than planned because of it being so close to the ceiling, which caused restriction when trying to get it on the wall. Once that was sorted, I tidied up again and then gave the giant mirror a good clean. Then it was time to pop in the new white cupboard. This was from a charity shop for £30, which I think is super expensive. 
and annoyingly my wife found the same one on marketplace for 15 pounds the next day oh well it gave to charity and it fits quite nicely and does the job now for the crafty bits i got these two fake white flowers on ebay for next to nothing as well as these plastic test tubes Using some string, glue and command hooks, I planned to make my finishing touch for the room. Firstly I made some hanging loops by gluing two small bits of string to the test tubes, being careful to measure them equally. Then I measured out two equal lengths of the string and using a bit of glue to keep it in place I wrapped the string around the tubes. I left those to dry and stuck the command hooks onto the wall. Once everything was dry I placed the fake flowers into the tubes and hung them in place. Then I had to make some adjustments to the top one as it wasn't sitting quite right. I think they make a cute finishing touch to my guest toilet. Thanks for watching this little makeover video. If you did like it, please give it a little thumbs up and subscribe. Catch you next time.